Uh, before we start this video, can I make a statement? Please. In the last video, if you uh, noticed a mysterious figure walking behind the scene with these gigantic headphones on, that was not someone with a metal detector looking for coins in the park. That was actually our videographer, Dwight. Yeah. And uh, that's his first cameo appearance in about 75 videos. But that was our videographer, Dwight. Um, so let's take a look. Are you uh, willing to do one more Venn diagram? I, I yearn to. Okay. This one is a good example of a categorical syllogism that to most people at first glance looks valid. Some pets are animals, some animals are dogs, and some pets are dogs. It seems valid at first before you think about it much. One of the interesting psychological facts about human beings is that we tend to judge the validity of an argument, or at least sometimes we do, by whether or not we agree with the conclusion. Mm -hmm. And if the conclusion is something we strongly think is true, we have a sort of a psychological tendency to give the argument a pass or to think it's good. Uh, the conclusion is obviously true. Yeah. So are the premises. And the premises are obviously true too, and that kind of pushes us to think it's valid. But it's well, the diagram will show us whether it is valid. And Mark asked me to write out the abbreviation or the symbolism. And so, you want to fill yeah, it let's, in? Let's just take okay. a look at this. We're keeping in mind the word summon logic means at least one. So it is indeed true that at least one pet is an animal. It's true that at least one animal's a dog. And it's true that at least one pet is a dog. All right, let's do a Venn diagram. Uh, the lower left letter is going to be P. So same with the lower left circle. The lower, le lower right is D. Then we have one letter up above. So the up above circle is going to be an A. Again, you only, only diagram the premises. If they're both universal, it doesn't matter which we do first. If they're both particular, as in this case, it doesn't matter. If one was universal and one was particular, we do the universal first. Since they're both particular, it won't matter. So let's just start off, say, with the first one. Some P or A. Now, the, um, I'm looking at the P and the A circle. And again, I kind of like doing this as a little scratch work for myself. It's like some P or A. Some of these P's are in the A circle. I would have an X in that area here, like that. And that's this spot right in here. So I know an X needs to go in this area here. There's two quadrants, though. There's a line cutting this area in half. I don't know if I should put the X here, or here, or both places. So if I know an X needs to go in an area, but the area is cut in half, I'm going to put the X right on that line. And that tells me the X's might be here, they might be here, they might be both places. I really don't know. But it's kind of like sitting on a fence. Let's take a look at the second premise then, some A or D. If I look at the A and the D circles, these two here lined up like that, some A or D would have an X in this area, which would be this area right here. But again, there's a line cutting in half. I don't know if I should put the X here, here, or both places. So if you have an area that you know you have to have an X, but there's a line cutting it in half, put the X on that line. Well, what kind of uh, things are we dealing with? Pets and animals. Those things exist. We both know that. There's no real question about their existence. So I would use a traditional interpretation. So I might look then at the P and the A circle and see if there's a place where I would need an X. But I've got an X in the P circle. So I've got that covered. I look at the, uh, the A circle, there's an X, there's two X's in those, so I'm covered. I would be absolutely guessing if I started slapping other X's out there. So I'm done diagramming. This would be an adequate picture of the traditional interpretation. I now need to ask myself, is this enough information to absolutely guarantee that the conclusion's true? Well, the conclusion, made up of P's and D's, says some P or D. I would expect to see an X inside this area right here, clearly inside. That is, it would be inside this area right here. Do I know with absolute certainty that there's an X in here? Well, this X might be, I don't know. This X might be, but I don't know. It's not absolutely guaranteed that there's an X in that area. Therefore, the premise doesn't give me enough information to guarantee the conclusion. This argument's invalid. It might look like the premises are giving me good reason to believe the conclusion, but they really aren't. And the Venn diagram's able to show it. And Paul? Yeah. And let me 
That, that's a very nice explanation, by the way. Yeah. Thorough, very thorough. And let me just add that this is a great example of something that was taught in the first unit. And that is, we have an argument, and it's got true premises and a true conclusion, but it's not valid. See, everything about this argument is true, and the conclusion is true, and the premises are true. The reason it's not valid is that it's not the case that if the premises are true, that guarantees the conclusion is true. The premises don't back up the conclusion in the right way for it to be valid. So even though they're true, it's not a valid argument. And this, this is a good example to study and think about as you learn these concepts of logic. Thank you.